Chapter two, Leslie Burke. Ellie and Brenda weren't back by seven. Jess had finished all the picking and helped his mother can the beans. She never canned except when it was scalding hot anyhow, and all the boiling turned the kitchen into some kind of hellhole. Of course, her temper had been terrible, and she had screamed at Jess all afternoon and was now too tired to fix any supper. Jess made peanut butter sandwiches for the little girls and himself, and because the kitchen was still hot and almost nauseatingly full of bean smell, the three of them went outside to eat. The U-Haul was still out by the Perkins place. He couldn't see anybody moving outside, so they must have finished unloading. I hope they have a girl, six or seven, said Maybelle. I need somebody to play with. You got Joy Sand. I hate Joy Sand. She's nothing but a baby. Joy Sand's lip went out. They both watched it tremble. Then her pudgy body shuddered and she let out a great cry. Who's teasing the baby? His mother yelled out the screen door. Jess sighed and poked the last of his sandwich into Joy Sand's mouth. Her eyes went wide and she clamped her jaws down on the unexpected gift. Now maybe he could have some peace. He closed the screen door gently as he entered and slipped past his mother, who was rocking herself in the kitchen chair, watching TV. In the room he shared with the little ones, he dug under his mattress and pulled out his pad and pencils. Then, stomach down on the bed, he began to draw. Jess drew the way some people drink whiskey. The piece would start at the top of his muddled brain and seep down through his tired and tensed up body. Lord, he loved to draw. Animals mostly, not regular animals like Miss Bessie or the chickens, but crazy animals with problems. For some reason, he liked to put his beasts into impossible fixes. This one was a hippopotamus, just leaving the edge of a cliff, of the cliff, cliff, turning over and over. You could tell by the curving lines in the air toward the sea below where surprised fish were leaping goggle-eyed out of the water. There was a balloon over the hippopotamus where his head should have been, but his bottom actually was. Oh, it was saying, I seem to have forgot my glasses. Jesse began to smile. If he decided to show it to Maybelle, he would have to explain the joke. But once he did, she would laugh like a live audience on TV. He would like to show his drawings to his dad, but he didn't dare. When he was in the first grade, he had told his dad that he wanted to be an artist when he grew up. He thought his dad would be pleased. He wasn't. What are they teaching you in that damn school? He had asked. Bunch of old ladies turned my only son into some kind of a... He had stopped on the word, but Jess had gotten the message. It was one you didn't forget, even after four hours. The devil of it was that none of his regular teachers ever liked his drawings. When they'd catch him scribbling, they'd screech about waste, wasted time, wasted paper, wasted ability. Except Miss Edmonds, the music teacher... She was the only one he dared show anything to, and she'd only been at school one year, and then only on Fridays. Miss Edmonds was one of his secrets. He was in love with her, not the kind of silly stuff Ellie and Brenda giggled about on the telephone. This was too real and too deep to talk about. Even to think about very much, her long, swishy black hair and blue eyes, blue, blue eyes, she could play the guitar like a regular recording star. And she had the soft, floaty voice that made Jess squish inside. Lord, she was gorgeous, and she liked him too. One day last winter, he had given her one of his pictures. Just shoved it into her hand after class and run. The next Friday, she had asked him to stay after a, minute, a minute after class. She said he was unusually talented. And she hoped he wouldn't let anything discourage him, but would keep it up. That meant Jess believed that she thought he was the best. It was not the kind of best that counted either at school or at home, but it was a genuine kind of best. He kept the knowledge of it buried inside himself like a pirate treasure. He was rich, very rich, but no one could know about it for now except his fellow outlaw, Julia Edmonds. Sounds like some kind of hippie, his mother had said when Brenda, who had told 
who had been in seventh grade last year, describe Miss Edmonds to her. She probably was. Jess wouldn't argue that. But he saw her as a beautiful wild creature who had been caught for a moment in that dirty old cage of a schoolhouse. Perhaps by mistake. But he hoped, he prayed, she'd never get loose and fly away. He managed to endure the whole boring week of school for that one half hour on Friday afternoons when they'd sit on the worn out rug on the floor of the teacher's room. There was no place else in the building for Miss Edmonds to spread out all her stuff. And they'd sing songs like, My Beautiful Balloon, that this land is your land, free to be me, free to be you and me, blowing in the wind. And because Mr. Turner, the principal, insisted, God bless America.